Hey guys, how's it going? There's definitely a lot of information about curved displays, and advertisers are pretty good at telling you about how it reduces eye strain or how immersive it is, but they rarely go into more detail beyond that. So I did what any sane person would and get three different monitors with three different curvatures just to test them out myself. I purchased this all with my own money to get the same experience you would. Welcome back to Reviews for Life. Here we go. First, let's take a look at some definitions. Curve monitors are measured in millimeters radius, so a 1000R means a monitor with a thousand millimeters radius. Given a picture like this, it's pretty easy to assume that the monitor is uniformly curved. In reality though, the displays are really only curved in the middle, with the sides being more flat. This is quite obvious when we take a straight edge towards the monitor. There should be a gap regardless of where I place the straight edge. But in this case, the gap only exists in the middle, while the sides are flat. The issue isn't too noticeable on shallower curves, but on aggressive ones like the Samsung G7, it gives this really weird fisheye effect. Perhaps the best way to illustrate this is to slightly bend a piece of paper and try reading from left to right. Even after two months, I'm still not used to the 1000R. But I gotta give credit where it's due, and the 1000R does provide a superior immersive experience. The curve allows you to sit a little closer, which allows your surroundings to be covered by the display, something that flat panels will never achieve. 2D games like Hades really benefits from this and is very enjoyable. However, 3D games, and especially first-person shooters, don't benefit as much. Now, this may seem counterintuitive, but hear me out. In 3D games, developers use something called rectilinear projection, which is a way of taking 3D scenes and projecting it onto a 2D surface. The key advantage here is that straight lines stay straight, as opposed to a fisheye lens, which makes straight lines curved. The downside is that when field of view increases, it causes a skewed effect seen around the edges. This is perfectly fine for flat displays, since it helps with immersion, but the curved displays already have this effect, and is amplified by what's in-game. It's tolerable on the 1500R, but on the 1000R, this results in a very distorted image. The only way to reduce this is to lower the field of view, but in first-person shooters, that puts you at a disadvantage. When playing Call of Duty, I experience some motion sickness because of fast rotations. Games that aren't as twitchy, like Horizon 4, are perfectly fine, and is actually more enjoyable on the curved than on the flat. For productivity, it's generally thought that curved displays should be avoided because straight lines would look bent. And that's true, especially around the edges. Looking straight onto a flat panel, everything looks straight. Personally, I found the 1500R to perform equally as good as flat. However, 1000R monitors have a lot more distortion, so it doesn't work quite as well. Curved monitors do have the advantage of a more uniform picture quality because ideally, the edges have the same angles as the center of the display. So let's find those angles and see how much of a difference it really makes. We'll start with the 27 inch flat panel as an example. Here we find the width of the monitor to be 23.5 inches. My rule of thumb for sitting distance is to use is this retina and take the result. Retina is a term introduced by Apple back in 2012 and can be used to describe different viewing distances for different pixel densities. In our case, for a sitting distance of 32 inches, the angle at the edges is about 70 degrees. We'll do the same with the 1000R 27 inch curved, except this time the math is a bit more involved. For simplicity, we'll just eyeball the angle to be about 86.16 degrees. Compared to our flat panel, the difference is 16 degrees, and honestly, that's not enough to see any visual differences. But one thing I did notice was moving the monitors off center, and as the curved one is rotated, the viewing angles suffer since we have to move out of the ideal focal point. This is a huge disadvantage because it limits your seating position to directly in front. Now, as I was rotating, another thing I noticed is that the pixels along the curve panels disappear along the edges a lot earlier than the flat. I'm not completely sure why this happens, so if anyone knows more about it, leave a comment. Finally, let's take a look at some general ergonomics. For glare, the curve monitor is a double-edged sword. This paper from Berkeley summarizes it well. The probability of experiencing glare and or veiling glare is reduced by curving the screen thereby improving the viewer's experience. This effect is somewhat offset by the fact that reflections off a curved screen are magnified relative to those off a flat screen. What does all this mean? 
Well, it's saying that the curved screen concentrates glare onto a single focal point, just like a satellite dish. We can test this by doing some experiments. Here, we're seated in front of the focal point while moving the light source. The glare gets really bad when the light source is directly in front because it lights up the whole screen. As we move the light source around, the glare improves quite a bit. Changing our position off center, we achieve the same effect as moving the glare. But as we saw earlier, this setup causes the colors to look washed out. When displaying content and sitting at the focal point, it's not as bad, but it's still quite distracting. With flat panels, there's no focal point, but instead there will just be a constant ball of glare no matter where you sit. So between curved and flat displays, there's no real winner here. For eye strain and eye ache, ViewSonic quotes a paper from Harvard Medical School saying that eye strain and eye ache are 60% more common on flat monitors than on curved monitors. Digging a bit deeper, we see that this data is cherry-picked because from the same chart, overall fatigue is worse on the curve by almost the same amount. Of course, eye strain and fatigue are pretty subjective and personally, I get eye strain on both displays. So take that with a grain of salt. On the surface, advertisers are really good at promoting their products, almost like they do it for a living. Now, one topic I haven't covered is ultrawides because I haven't used one yet. In general, curved monitors have improved immersion at the cost of reduced viewing angles. If you're coming from a flat display, they are pretty easy to adapt to after just a few days. For a single display setup, I would choose a flat monitor or a curved one with at least 1500R. This gives the flexibility down the line for adding additional monitors. I wouldn't recommend getting a 1000R unless you have some specific use case that takes advantage of that curve. For a multi-monitor setup, I get either two flat displays or two curved displays because it's easier to jump between them when they're the same. For flat monitors, I'm currently using an LG 27GL850 and is a pretty good all-rounder. For curved, well, I have yet to find one that I really like. Alright, that's it from me. Consider liking and subscribing and stay classy.